Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for joining us for this final episode of TSN for Football this year. This is our postseason interview with Coach Devaney as we take a look back on this season and these seniors that helped make this year special. Coach, first of all, that 40-10 win over Wesleyan, you know, you guys finished the year at 6-2, and two, but to get your 51st consecutive win on Jesse Miller Field, especially in such dramatic fashion over a very good football team, what does that mean for you, you, your staff, and most importantly, your players? Well, it really, you know, makes you go into the offseason on a high note after having those two disappointing losses in Week 6 and Week 7. Uh, you know, I, I said this to a couple people after that game. It, it might have even been meant more to win that game having lost the other two games than, than if we had gone undefeated. Uh, I just think it says a lot about our players, said a lot about our seniors as characters and, and, and the ability that they had to get everybody else to buy in to play in that last game as well as we played, uh, despite the fact that we were out of the race. And obviously a big part of that senior class is your, your senior running back, your captain, Evan Bunker, who is now the all-time leading rusher in NESCAC history. He said after the game, you know, when he came to Trinity, he was just trying to get on the field. He was a four-string running back. You've seen him now for four years. He's become, you know, one of the greatest offensive players in NESCAC history. What has his progression meant to your program, and especially to get those final 10 yards to break the record in his last game here? Yeah, I don't know that there was a progression. He was just from the day that he had an opportunity when Ben Crick tore his ACL uh, that freshman year, Evan just took that opportunity and ran with it. He was just consistent. That's why I don't know. That's why I say I don't know about if it was a progression because he was consistent from that first opportunity all the way through his senior year and just a great, great, uh, hard-nosed, physical football player. Another senior who doesn't get a lot of headlines. Not an AJ Jones. Not a bunker. Senior wide receiver Eddie Franca, who plays on all your special teams unit, the team loves him. His first career reception is a touchdown in the Wesleyan game for homecoming. How special is that for you as a head coach, seeing a guy stick with it for four years, despite not seeing a lot of the field? Yeah, and not only in the Wesleyan game, but early in the Wesleyan game, too. It wasn't like it was the game was over. I mean, he did it in the first quarter, the first score of the game. And, you know, what a, what a, just a great lesson for people Eddie Franca is because. He never really got the playing time that he wanted, but he practiced so hard with a great attitude every day, never complained, kind of knew where he was, and was o not okay with it, but, but loved being part of the team. And the thing that, but he was ready though. When that opportunity came and Chris Ragone got hurt early in the game, we'd had some injuries earlier in the season, you know, Eddie wasn't one of those guys who just sulked because he wasn't getting playing time. He was ready. He practiced so hard all the time that the actual play he scored on, he might be better at running that play than any of our starters because it's a double move that he uses as a scout team receiver all the time against our defensive backs. So I, I thought I did think that was a truly special moment uh, for Eddie to get in there and be ready to go. And like I said, just just a great lesson for anybody else who's kind of behind the eight ball, not getting an opportunity to play. You got two pass at that point. You can quit and, and, and sulk or you can do what Eddie did, which was practice every day like you are going to play and then the opportunity comes and you, and you get that, that, big, that big play. So coach, the first time we talked, the first question I asked you was, who's your starting quarterback going to be? Mm -hmm. You didn't tell me, but when you came out against Bates, you had Sonny Puzo and then Henry Foy sort of came in in the second half, played the entire Williams game, but from then on it was all Sonny. He seemed to make incredible possession week in and week out, threw a lot of great deep balls, especially this past week. Mm -hmm. Just what have you seen from him turn into the potential to be a bona fide star in this league at that position? Well, the thing about Sonny is he's not, he's gifted. I mean, he's got great arm strength. He's got great mobility. He, for a freshman, even in the preseason, was way ahead mentally of where you think a freshman would be. So we knew he had all that. You just, if you're going to play a freshman at any position, you're going to deal with some freshman nerves, freshman mistakes, that type of thing. It's all magnified when he's the quarterback. You know, when you put a freshman receiver on, he's going to run the wrong route a couple times and half the people aren't going to notice. But the freshman quarterback, when he looks like a freshman quarterback, everybody sees that. So we knew we were going to deal with that a little bit. Uh, happened early in the Amherst game, and we put Henry back, Henry in for a couple of series, and then we went back with Sonny in the second half, and he played really well. And, you know, I, I think the, uh, the way he played in the Wesleyan game is, is, uh, is a hard, good harbinger for us in the future. Well, other than Sonny, you had a lot of freshmen who needed to step up this year in key situations, in key games, in key roles because of injuries to some of your star players and your upperclassmen. And it seems as though they played 
pretty well, all said and done, especially your wide receivers and on special teams. How important is that going forward as you guys try and build this program back up to 8-0 and, and winning an SK championship? Yeah, it's one of those things where we I, I do think we have a very talented freshman class, um, and we played way too many of them this year. It, it, it wasn't by choice in many cases. Uh, you don't really want to play that many freshmen. Uh, but they did. They handled themselves really well, those that did play. And it's our job now to get them to grow up this offseason, get a little bigger, a little bit stronger, and you know, handle their academics and all the things that go with being transitioning into college. And, and uh, hopefully that, that, that will be a bright future for us. So looking back at that Wesleyan game, coming into the, the game, their quarterback hadn't thrown an interception all season. The ground game was running out 150 yards a game. Trinity's known for its defense, really step up this Saturday. How would you guys game plan for them, and why were you so effective? Well, we knew that, uh, that you couldn't let them run the ball because, they're number one, they're good at running the ball. Number two, their offensive staff is patient enough to continue to try to run the ball. So we had to take that away from them. Uh, and really we just did that by really simplifying things up front and not, la not allowing them to put us in situations where our linebackers left the box. And that put our secondary in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, which is atypical of, of a Trinity defense. We're more of a, of a zone team, but we put our, our secondary in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, not because we wanted to man blitz, but to leave our linebackers in the box and stop the run. And, you know, Tom Szymanski and Mike Weatherby and Nate Sear and Rob Gow, you know, and, and Nate Hitchcock as a freshman, those guys, Frank Leva, you know, those guys just stepped up and played really well up front. Coach, in closing, uh, you guys finished at 6-2. and two. Those two losses were a combined four points. Your six wins were by an average of about 27. I did the math. Yeah. Uh, but looking back on the season, what do you think, and, and, and what's next for this team as you guys progress forward? Oh, geez. I haven't really had time to think about the whole thing yet, but I guess real quickly I would say uh, I was really happy with the progression our team was making as we went through week three, four, five. I thought we got better each week, and I really felt like after that Bowden game we were gonna we were gonna take off against Middlebury. You know, I think some of the injuries caught up to us at some point, uh, but our guys continue the battle and not and not make that an excuse. Uh, we didn't. Middlebury outplayed us in that one game. We had opportunities to win and didn't get it done. We did bounce back and play very hard, I thought, against an Amherst team who was really talented and came up a little bit short. Uh, but the way we finished that season against Wesleyan, an undefeated team uh, here at home, just leaves us with a good feeling about the team. You know, I think uh, there were some holes in our team this year. We had some flaws that, uh, that we weren't able to overcome in all eight weeks. Uh, but I, was, I, I liked the team, though. I liked our attitude. I like the way we practiced as the season went on. Uh, I like the way the guys handled disappointment. Uh, I was very proud of, our, of, of the way our guys handled that stuff. And the way we finished it, you, you just can't, you can't go off on a better note than, than having an undefeated Wesleyan team come to your place and just absolutely beat them offensively, defensively, and with your special teams. It's a good way to go into the offseason. Thank you, Coach. Once again, as always, we thank Coach Devaney for his time. Thank you for joining us all season, but especially for this postseason interview. I'm Harry Hawkins for TSN, and thank you again for watching.